Today, we're going from zero to 100 in Stage Life 4. Let's go. Hi, Matthew Presley here with Stage Light. Today, we're starting our new Stage Light from zero to 100 series. It's gonna be a weekly show where we take a part of Stage Light and we go in depth answering all of your questions. We're gonna be covering the whole overview, how to get set up, how to get content, how to get some free stuff, you name it. Let's dive in. Okay, here we are at Stage Light's homepage. Now, if you haven't signed in yet, it'll look quite different, but go ahead, sign in, it's free. All you need is a valid email address. When you do, you're gonna see our homepage um, pretty simple. You've got your menu up here. You can do things like access your song, your settings, the store. Uh, one thing we always ask when people ask us for help is what version you're using. You can go to help and then about stage light and then it'll tell you what version you're using. Anyway, um, homepage, you got three options, new song, open song, and lessons. I'm not going to go over lessons in any of these videos because they teach you how to do stuff. So let's just jump right in. When you start a new song, we're gonna be, we always put you in our drum machine. Uh, drum machine's really cool. You can make a beat just by tapping some notes out or swiping. And then of course you can play if you have a MIDI controller or use our on-screen instruments. If none of those are appealing, we also have tons of built-in patterns. Let's pick and choose one. Sounds good. To get out of the drum machine or any editor, you're always gonna see this little X up here. Tap that and boom, you're out. Starting from the top of the screen, you've got your stage light section. I've got a little toggle here to show me input, output, CPU usage. I've got a record button that engages record on whatever pattern you have selected here in Loop Builder. I've got play button, which as you might guess, engages play. Stop button to stop. Song follow will uh, make all your patterns and loops play left to right. More on that in our uh, next episode. BPM, this is where you can go and set the BPM. You can enter it in manually with your keyboard or you can tap tempo. All songs default at 120, but I can tap out whatever I'm feeling. Sounds good. More in this particular setting of note, um, you of course can increment, you can change the time signature of your patterns. You can also um, turn on your metronome, choose it to be on and off during playback or just recording. You've got some volume settings and whether or not you have pre-roll. This is kind of how it's set up by default. We recommend it. Moving on into the transport, if I hit this little blue arrow, it's gonna show me a few other important items. Grid setup. This allows you to set up things like quantize on record. Don't have perfect timing, no problem. We default to automatically quantizing your MIDI notes to 16th notes. If you want to be a little more intricate, you can set it up to 30 second triplets. You can also change the launch beat. This is a loop builder specific setting. Uh, basically, whenever you press play, we start the playback on the next beat if the sequencer is going, or the next bar, or the next two bars or four bars. Based on your preference, if you're not sure what to pick, Try them all out, see if you like it. The last thing that affects all patterns is swing. You can turn it on, choose from some of our presets and dial in the amount. This affects uh, instrument track MIDI patterns and drum patterns, uh, but you do have controls to turn them on or off on any, any given pattern, which we'll get into once again in a future video. Next key feature of the transport, no pun intended, is key lock. This allows you to set the key and mode. You know, if if you're a musician and you understand, you can set any mode you want or turn it off and play in multiple modes. If you're brand new, I highly recommend to use this as a tool to explore uh, the many different music modes and, you know, find, find ones that you like for what you're hearing in your head. Last but not least is a MIDI learn button. If you have a MIDI keyboard hooked up to stage light, this is where you're gonna go to you know, turn a knob and map that knob to, or a button to a parameter in stage light. Uh, moving over here, this is the song section. If I hit the folder button, I can open up a song. If uh, I touch a song in the song button, I've got this little pencil icon, that'll let me edit a song. You know, for example, you may get an idea, 
start on it, save it, get it home, get home to uh, do something else with it, maybe it wasn't so great. This is where you go to uh, delete said song, replace an image, change the name, etc. You also can start a new song by hitting the button here. Let's cancel out and move on. A button to save song. Touch it, you save your song, it now displays your song title. You can touch it again at any point to save your work. Sharing button is for exporting. You can do exporting, you know, stereo mixes, stems, SoundCloud, song transfer, etc. Next is tools. You have undo, redo, and our toolbar. This will change based on whether you're working in uh, Loop Builder or Timeline View. Last but not least, we have the view, the view section. View section, you've got three options. I'm gonna go from uh, right to left here. The eyeball will let you show and hide uh, certain tracks or certain views. In this case, I can show send tracks or I can show the mini timeline view. Over here, I have the button to toggle timeline view. And if I touch it, it's gonna exit Loop Builder and go to timeline view. Last but not least, I have the mixer button. This will show and hide the full screen mixer and that works in both timeline and loop builder view. Moving on, um, all songs start off with a drum track. However, with Stagelight, you have unlimited tracks and you have several different track types. To add a track, you can hit the plus track button here. We also have a copy of it down here in case you have too many tracks and this isn't on the screen. Hit the plus track button and you have your choice between adding an audio track, an instrument track, an additional drum track, a send track, or a track template. Let's add an instrument track. When you hit add an instrument track, you're going to see your browser on the right hand side. That'll let you choose between any of our stage light instruments or any of your external uh, audio unit or VST plugins if you're on Mac or PC. You can add by hitting the add button or if you want to add multiple, you can just drag and drop a couple like so and click this arrow to hide the browser at the end. Now with tracks, you'll notice when I select them, if you look in the lower right, you have what we call an on-screen instrument icon. This only shows up on instrument tracks. If I drop an audio track, you'll notice there's nothing there. But if I touch an instrument track, I see a piano. Pressing that, it's gonna bring it up, and I can play the instrument that I have selected. Touching another instrument track, I'm now playing that. If you're playing an instrument that supports a MPE, like our built-in sample verse, you can do things like gestures, like moving up or down to control filter, left or right for pitch, etc. Last but not least, if I select a drum track, I get drum pads that I can play. And I can lay down a quick beat real quick. That was terrible. Let me do that one more time. If I go down to lay down an instrument part, that, that's how you use on-screen on instruments. Now, I've showed you the drum editor. When you lay down MIDI, we also have an instrument, uh, a, a piano roll or MIDI editor as well. To get to that, you just double tap on the MIDI part and boom, I can see my MIDI notes. If I touch them, it's gonna audition. I got a list of my notes here. Now, earlier I showed you key lock. Um, it, uh, it's automatically turned on for your MIDI parts as well, but that's something you can actually turn off here like so. We'll go into more MIDI editing tools in a later episode. So I've shown you Loop Builder view, you've seen Timeline view. Let's, let's get into some basic mixing. Basic mixer is down here on the lower left. Pressing this will reveal what we call our track mixer or track inspector. The track mixer shows you whatever track you have selected. So for example, if I touch drums, I see the volume, solo, mute, record pro status, some uh, track uh, options, panning, filtering, just for my drums. I also have insert slots where I can add effects. Touch the plus add effect button, you get an effect browser. In Stagelight, we have 14 effects, and we also support VST and audio units on platforms that support them. 
To add an effect, you can just click on what you want and drag and drop, like so. To show the effect, you can just touch on it and you'll see the parameters of set effect. To get out of it, hit the X button here. You kind of get the idea. Tracks have insert effects and send effects as well. If I want to add a send effects, I hit plus send, drop in the effect I want to send. We're going to automatically show you so you can, you know, dial it in or, uh, you know, pick a preset. And uh, you can dial in the amount like so. Now, one thing that's important, you've noticed that my track mixer changed. It changed because I ran out of room uh, real estate wise. If I hit this, these icons down here, I can get to all parts of my track inspector. I can hit my channel strip section, my plugin uh, insert effect section, or my send section. Works here and also works in the full screen mixer view. Mixer view shows you all, all everything you have in your song and you can quickly use these toggles to show all of your tracks in, inserts, all of your sends, or all of your strips. Now, assuming you take all this knowledge and you start building stuff, how you share it. I touched on this a little bit by going into the share menu. We have multiple ways. You can do mix down song. You're going to name your song and you can choose between exporting a loop region or the entire song. These particular options are based on your loop region, which you can set here. If I want to export four bars, 16 bars of a song, I can do that. If I had an entire song, it's going to render everything into a stereo mix. We also have the ability to mix down tracks separately. So for example, I have five tracks here and maybe I want to collaborate with somebody using another DAW. I would go to mix down tracks separately. Once again, choose between loop build, the loop region of the entire song. Most likely you're going to do the entire song. Hit OK and it's going to create an individual audio track for every track I have listed. And those are compatible with any other application. Uh, we also have Mix Down to SoundCloud, which does the same thing as Mix Down Song, but it'll let you log into your SoundCloud account and just post it online. Last but not least in the share menu is, is Transfer Song or Song Transfer. This allows you to take something you're working on on any device and just transfer it to um, another device, such as from your iPad to your Mac or PC, or even vice versa. I've got a song here on my uh, Samsung Galaxy S8. If I want to transfer it, I can send it to my iPad. Couple of important tips with this. One, stage light has to be running on both devices for this to work. They both need to be on the same Wi-Fi network. And last but not least, you need to make sure you're signed into the same stage light account. I'm signed into my personal account on both of these. So to do it, you'd hit share, transfer a song. It's going to scan the network for what devices you have on your network. Here's my iOS device. I hit that, hit transfer. You're going to see a little progress of it, you know, tra being transferred in the background. And boom, it's done. If you look on the iPad, transfer song received. What do you want to do? Save it or open it? You can open it and boom. You can pick up right where you left off from your phone on your iPad or your Mac or your PC. All right, now you know how to share songs. Let's cover one aspect. I touched on in the beginning by saying I have signed in and I've created an, an account. When you do that, that gives you access to get stuff in our Stage Light store. Now, obviously, you know, you can download Stage Light for free. Most of its features are for, are for free. You know, we're supported by, you know, creating content that people purchase and of course, unlocking additional features. If you create an account though, um, you can actually get some content for free. Once you've entered in an email address and you go to the store, you'll see this pencil icon up here. You can fill out your profile info. And for each of these lines, you get a dollar in what we call content credits. Content credits can be used to buy anything out of our loop collection or anything out of our preset collection. If you want to buy credits or you want to buy features, you can hit the buy credit button and you buy what we call cash credits. Cash credits can be used to purchase loops or presets or features such as, you know, in this case, our iOS unlock or our ultimate unlock. Well, that about wraps up episode one. Thank you all for watching. We're going to be back next week with episode two, which is going to do a deep dive on our drum machine. If you like it, hit the subscribe button, leave comments below and tell us what else you'd like to see videos on. We'll see you next time. Take it easy.